file and we're still with uh, the main consequences of this parliamentary election and how it, it will affect Egypt. Now the time is to be, to be talking about the economy. We've been ignoring the economy for some time and we've been focusing on only the political side of the parliamentary elections. Now is the time for us to go back and take a look at the economy, especially now that the situation is not really promising in the short term. To talk to us more about the Egyptian economy and its chances after the parliamentary elections, I'd like to welcome with us Dr. Mohamed el the Professor of Economics at American University in Cairo. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning, Dr. al uh, First of all, we want you to explain to us, if you see any, of course, uh, is there a direct relation between uh, the stock market, its uh, ups and downs, if it's bearish or bullish, uh, and the uh, political, which is a very, uh, I mean, a very uh, important question that might cross some people's minds, simple minds, uh, the political uh, sphere and the political events, and especially the parliamentary elections. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, the financial stock market is reacting to the political situation in the sense of it's trying to estimate um, how secure will investments in Egypt be, how certain will the fu uh, financial future of Egypt uh, be, and uh, there is a direct relation to it. So if you notice that uh, when, uh, when, when, when the violence in, in Tahrir Square a couple of weeks ago uh, flared up, the stock market lost about 10% of its valuation. 10%, that's about uh, 4 billion US dollars in two days. Um, right after the elections, the market started picking up because the elections went in, in an ideal scenario, frankly. They, they, they were smooth, uh, huge participation, no violence, and peaceful. Should this trend continue, I think that would send a very strong message to the internal and external and foreign investors that the uncertainty from the political scene in Egypt would be removed. And that in itself, I think, will be a huge boost uh, to, the, to, the, to the trust and confidence in the economy, which will be definitely positive uh, for the short term, which Egypt absolutely needs. As an economic analyst, where do you see uh, the government or the people who are responsible for the country? Should they put uh, their main concerns uh, in? Is it, for example, the stock market or should it be tourism or should it be uh, production of, for example, specific products or something like that? Where should they start to pick up the economy? That's a good question. In my opinion, neither. The government should focus on what the government does best. Plant the seed for a secure economy, so focus on security, remove the uncertainty from the political scene, uh, bring back the trust between the people and the police force. Uh, no country will be able to function financially and economically without uh, an active police force on the streets and people trusting it. And let the market take care of itself. Investors want to make money. Egypt is a huge market. Foreign investors realize that opportunity and they want to enter the market. But they need to know that their investments will be safe. And they need to know that there will be security on the street. So it is my belief that if the government wants that to help the economy, it should not directly interfere, definitely not in the stock market, certainly not with foreign investment. They should do what governments do best, bring back security, bring back political certainty, mm -hmm. and the markets will take care of themselves. Okay, uh, Dr. al Hassas, of course, even people with, uh, uh, who are uh, uh, economically naive would uh, know for, for, for sure that uh, tourism has a direct effect on economy and uh, once uh, tourism is withdrawing or uh, going uh, backwards that would affect the reputation and foreign investment because the, the world goes, mm -hmm. uh, the word would spread mm -hmm. that uh, there, is no, uh, there is uncertainty and there is no security or mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable the situation mm -hmm. inside the country. So if there is a political stream that is going to scare away tourism and uh, uh, create a, 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 a certain um, atmosphere of um, negativity uh, for the w towards the welfare of tourism. Would that affect uh, economy? Tourism is 11% of the Egyptian gross domestic product. That is uh, one roughly out of every 10 pounds, Egyptian pounds, that the economy produces come from directly from tourism. Uh, tourism employs uh, a huge number of uh, people and mainly they are people who live hand to mouth. They mm -hmm. are people who are the most vulnerable in Egypt, who are very close to the poverty line, 
who uh, who really would suffer most uh, should uh, the, any fluctuation in the tourism sector uh, hit. Uh, it is my belief the tourism sector is very important for Egypt, and it will not be dependent on 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 certain interference in 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 financial and economic policies. What tourists want. They want to come visit the things they love to visit in Egypt, what Egypt has been famous forever, knowing that they would be secure while doing so. Mm -hmm. um, tourism, if it's hit, it will take few <coughs> years uh, to, to, to recover, but it will recover. We remember the, the unfortunate events that hit Egypt in the 90s from the bombings at the tourist places and what have you. And alhamdulillah, Egypt recovered very swiftly in a, in, in a span of few years afterwards, the moment tourists believe that security is back in Egypt. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I, am, I am optimistic uh, about, about the future in the long run, as long as we remove the uncertainty, as long as the political process is trusted and there is uh, no uh, counter, uh, violent counter uh, faction to the elections and there is no um, turning back on the democratic process. Uh, I believe tourism will come back when uncertainty is removed, when security in this country is coming back. Which, inshallah, it will. Well, the Egyptian Central Bank uh, did something that was not the normal people on the street could not understand. At a time when the economy was suffering, they raised the interest rate one percent. What is that? Is this should this be more comforting for the people, or should they worry because they are raising the interest rate? The Egyptian Central Bank is in a very, bank is in a very tough situation. They're bleeding foreign reserves, and they've been bleeding foreign reserves since uh, the past few months at a very alarming rate. And what the Egyptian Central Bank is trying to do is uh, to basically compensate investors for the increased risk that they will take by investing in Egypt, to convince them to keep their money in Egypt. Um, so I, I, they are in a, in a tough situation and they're trying to do the best they can, but the foreign reserves are reaching very dangerous depletion levels. Um, as, of, uh, as of past October, uh, they dropped to 22 billion according to the declarations of the IMF, down from 36 billion. This is a very alarming burn rate, and what the IMF, is, what, what what the bank is trying to do, sorry, the IMF came to mind. What the bank is trying to do is to uh, basically compensate investors to convince them to stay in. Whether they're successful or not uh, in doing so will have uh, tremendous impacts on the economy going forward. And last in the past couple of weeks, when the central bank uh, issued uh, some Egyptian bonds, I believe they paid some of the highest uh, record interest rates uh, in the recent history of Egypt. That is very expensive for Egypt. It is not sustainable and it needs to be dealt with. But at this time, we're facing severe uh, monetary and financial uh, tightening because of uh, the uncertainty. It all goes back to the uncertainty. If you want to help the economy, deal with the uncertainty, simply put. Hmm. Dr. al Hassas, you've been mentioning uncertainty as an expert, and it's clear that it is the one, number one threat to uh, the collapse of economy. So how, when we talk about uncertainty, the, e Egypt has taken the decision not to accept a loan from the IMF, and then lately we have heard that they have accepted uh, right. one. Right. So wouldn't that right. normally, or um, right. according to the... Um, naive mind, economically naive again, would threaten the uncertainty of uh, absolutely. our economy. Uh, so absolutely. why did that happen? Explain absolutely. It. I was talking to a few of the leading uh, worldwide investors uh, last month during the World Economic Forum. And they told me we were waiting for Egypt to send us a clear signal by accepting the IMF loan to commit to reform. By not doing so, I think it actually exacerbated the problem, unfortunately. Um, Taking an IMF loan is not an easy decision. It's a very hard decision, and restructuring is politically, uh, could be political suicide for many politicians. It's, uh, the IMF requires very harsh policies. But at this point, Egypt needs to send a very clear signal to internal and foreign investors, to domestic and foreign investors, that we are committed to the way of financial reform and economic reform, and they need to do so without hesitation. And this hesitation you mentioned, this hesitation you mentioned, led, I think, Egypt to bleed a lot of foreign investments, led Egypt to bleed a huge amount of reserve, led to an increase in employment. And we need to reverse it. So yes, Egypt turned it down, but let's correct this path going forward. Um, unfortunately, I'm not sure the IMF will offer Egypt the same good terms that were offered in the first term, but 
we do not have many uh, Choices. alternative options. Mm -hmm. We need this injection of foreign money and injection of foreign confidence and injection of signaling that we are committed to reform mm -hmm. simultaneously and in parallel with the political process and removing uncertainty from the political process. Mm -hmm. I'm mentioning uncertainty all over the place, but it is my belief that in the long and medium term, I'm optimistic about Egypt, but in the short term, unless we deal with uncertainty, times will be tough. What will be the consequences of the outcome of this parliamentary elections? Would it matter whether uh, the Liberals won or the Muslim Brotherhood won? Will it affect the economy or it wouldn't make a difference? You know, it's very interesting that all the debate I've been hearing about the, between, between the Liberals and uh, between the rightmost and the leftmost and what <laughs> have you has been all focusing on social issues. I'm yet to hear about economic policies. What people in the street care most about is whether they'll be able to feed their kids or not at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the, 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 the degree of debate had reached that amount of uh, democratic or political sophistication. And that's understandable due to the recency of the experience. But uh, I think for me, frankly, I want to see a commitment to the democratic process, whatever it brings, whatever it brings. I want the people to accept what takes place and I want people to actually be very harsh in assessing the performance of whoever wins the next elections. And if they don't perform, if they don't put bread on the table, to vote them out of power next time. But or they to keep should them in have the some patience because would it be on the short term if any of the parties uh, won, for example, a majority in the parliament and they have an, a solid economic plan? How many years would it take them to prove whether they can stay in power or they can leave? That's a very good point. The, the, the challenge between democracy and economic policies is they're on a different time frame. Mm -hmm. So economic policies usually take a number of years to actually take effect, but voters are very impatient. So, for example, um, Obama took a lot of criticism in the U.S. for the policies that Bush implemented because they came to term at the term of Obama. Uh, President Clinton took a lot of uh, applause uh, for his economic performances for policies that uh, uh, Bush uh, Sr. actually implemented at the time. Then the, the political time frame and the economic time frame are usually out of sync and this is part of the game. This is part of the game. The key thing is to realize that if you're in this game, the political game for the long haul, you should keep your eye on the long-term goal, economically speaking, and not go for quick, populist uh, moves that will give you a little bit of short-term political popularity at the expense of long-term stability for the country and your own political stability. Right, but Dr. al has you say, going back to, uh, to uncertainty, which is the core of the topic, and I believe very much that this is the key word to any uh, economic stability. The reason that people are so worried is that because all the people who uh, is expected to are expected to come in Parliament, like a um, uh, certain political stream, and let's say uh, Muslim Brotherhood or any Islamic stream, they're only talking about uh, social issues. They're not um, explaining their, uh, any right. economic program. Right. They're not setting any economic or political right. program like right. other uh, people who uh, were trying right. to explain. So maybe that is part of the uncertainty. So w from your own point of view, what do you think is the right thing to do? I am not alarmed because of that. Let me tell you why. This happens everywhere. If you look at the conservatives in the US, they mm -hmm. run on the social agenda, not the economic agenda. So it's not going to change anything. Uh, uh, it's going to create more uncertainty. The moment they take office, the moment they have to collect garbage from the street, mm -hmm. the moment they have to deal with payroll, reality will hit and they would have to deal with that reality I honestly I'm not worried about who will from an economic point of view who will come to power as long as we are all committed to continuing the democratic process right, that's true and to people voting, need to hear that exactly and to voting people out of power unfortunately what I've been hearing a lot and I've been listening very intently right. in the current elections from the right and the left by the way I've been hearing what people are against either on the social issues or on political yeah, issues. But people I have not been hearing, sorry to, to, sure. to, to interfere, I've not been hearing what people are for on the economic issues. People are making their stance by saying what they're against on social issues. Right. I'm yet to hear what people are for. Yeah, but, but most of the time on talk shows and on the media and in the press and everywhere, people are always hearing now that p p women are going to wear veils and they're not going to drive the cars, nobody's going to wear the swimsuits, which is not important. It doesn't matter what we're going to wear. Right. It, it only matters how much of a salary are we going to do if we are going to make a living as a as a single moms for example and we're going to feed our kids as men and women but people are not talking about that people who are going to be in charge of the government 
They will once they're in power and they have to face the voters next time. I am not worried about that, frankly, as long as the democratic process keeps going forward. The Islamists took uh, charge in Turkey, the Islamists took charge in Indonesia, and they were able to deliver. If they commit the country to policies that are not popular, they're going to be voted out of power. Simple as that. As long as the process continues, the process will self-correct. Hopefully. Well, Hopefully. Dr. Hopefully. <laughs> Dr. Mohammed al assessed Professor of Economics at the American University in Cairo, we thank you very much for being with us. I appreciate Thanks the opportunity. Thank you. And now it's time for some light news away from politics and economics, and we'll be back with the breakfast show.